In today's tech review, I'm going over the new Kobo Vault, a military grade cryptocurrency wallet that's removed practically all physical points of attack, is extremely durable, and it even has its own self-destruct mechanism. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Eric of Investing Apps TV. And before we start today's review of the Kobo Vault, I would like to say a quick thank you to Kobo for sending me their new hardware wallet to review and share with you guys. And of course, as always, if after the video, you would like to learn more about this particular wallet, I'll link down below where you can find it online, as well as my full list of its pros and cons. But with that being said, guys, let's get started. So what exactly is the Kobo Vault? The Kobo Vault is a military-grade cryptocurrency cold storage wallet designed to protect your cryptocurrency from digital hacking attempts, hardware tampering, and from everyday physical damage. The Kobo Vault is broken down into three parts, and each part comes together as a whole to protect your cryptocurrency. The first part is the cold storage wallet. Now this is the core part of the Kobo Vault, and it's the part that allows you to send and receive cryptocurrency. It works in conjunction with the mobile app, and we'll discuss that more in just a bit. The second part is the battery, which is actually magnetically detachable. When it comes to the Kobo Vault, the battery is only connected to the device when using the cold storage wallet. And when not in use, Kobo Vault's battery is detached and stored in the protective shell. And by detaching the battery when you store it, you don't have to worry about the battery corroding and causing it to lose immediate access to your cryptocurrency. And the last part is the protective case. Now this protective case is designed to be highly resistant to physical damage and houses both the battery and cold storage wallet in separate compartments like I mentioned to prevent battery corrosion. So before I get into the specs and the security features of this wallet, I would like to actually cover what you actually get inside the box because they do pack a lot inside here. Just for size reference, this is the actual wallet itself and this is the box it comes in. It is much larger because they do include a lot of different items. So first of all, you do get the actual Kobo Vault wallet itself right here. And for size comparison, this is a smartphone, a Samsung Galaxy S7, so it's smaller than a phone. And it's, you know, maybe a little bit thicker, but they also do include a detachable battery, like I talked about, which is great for avoiding battery corrosion. Just slides right in and attaches via magnet, just like that. That is your wallet right there. Next up is the actual protective shell case. Now this here is what's military grade right here. This is really durable. It feels really solid in hand. And once you open it up, you'll see that it has two slots. You can store the detachable battery separately. You just slide that right in. And then you can also store your Kobo Vault right in there. You just slide that one in. And now both are stored in here. You can lock that up. And now you have your military grade storage right here. This thing is really durable. And like we'll talk about in a second, it has different types of resistances to water, impact, and different things like that. So this is definitely a handy shell right here. Next up, they do include the charger. This is the charger right here. And you'll notice that the actual Kobo Vault does not have a USB port on it. So you don't have to plug it into your computer to charge it. You just have to detach the battery from the back of the Kobo Vault. And you'll take that battery, you'll insert it via magnet right into the charger. And then they also do include a USB-C charging cable right here, which you'll actually plug into the charger and then you can plug that into the wall. So really you can charge your device without having to plug it into a computer. Another great advantage. Next up, they do include a all metal mnemonic tablet. This is it right here, you can see. So it says Kobo, and once you open that up, you'll see that there are numbered slots here, and that's to store your recovery seed, your 24 word recovery seed. You have one through 12 on one side, and 12 through 24, 13 through 24 on the other side, and they do include metal letter, uh, letter blocks right here. You hear the rattling. There are 282 letters in here, going from A to Z, and this will make up your recovery seed. You can store them here. I really like this and think this is a nice touch because most hardware wallets only include a piece of paper for you to write, write your recovery seed on. And the Kobo Vault comes with a mnemonic tablet and metal letter blocks, all metal, both pieces. So it's really handy, really great for protecting your recovery seed against water damage or fire. So definitely a nice touch by Kobo. Next up, they do include a screwdriver. This screwdriver is to actually open up the bottom of your Kobo Vault, there's a little slot right there. If you can, you unscrew that little slot right there, and that's where you can insert a TF card uh, or a micro SD card in there, and that's where you'll update the actual device itself. So when there's uh, firmware updates, you don't have to plug this into a computer. You'll just go to the Kobo Vault website directly, download the file onto your TF or micro SD card. You'll unscrew the little door here. You'll insert the cart, and it will auto update itself and verify that it's uh, it's an authentic file. So another safety feature that's built in by Kobo. Lastly guys, they do include the user manual right here. It's a pretty straightforward and short user manual. Just walks you through how to set it up and how to connect the Kobo Vault to the Kobo app on your phone. 
and of course they do include the warranty card as well. When it comes to durability, the Cobo Vault is certified military grade and designed with a highly durable all metal body that uses aircraft grade aerospace aluminum. In addition, both the cold storage wallet and the battery are IP68 water resistant. Now when it comes to impact resistance, when both the wallet and the battery are inserted into the protective shell, the vault is rated IK10 impact resistant. Now just to give you an idea of what this rating means, that means that it can withstand the impact of an 11 pound bowling ball if dropped on it. And while that would be a cool sight to see, sorry guys, I don't have an 11 pound bowling ball on me to drop on the Kobo vault. And again, when both the wallet and the battery are inserted into the protective case, the entire vault is rated military standard 810G. This includes things such as drop resistance, vibration resistance, protection against high temperature storage, low temperature storage, temperature shock, and corrosion resistance. Alright guys, so we're going to first talk about the hardware security of this wallet, and then we'll hop into its software security. So first up on the hardware side, they've pretty much removed all physical points of attack from this wallet. There's no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no NFC, no 3G or 4G connection, and I think most importantly, there's no USB connection on this wallet. Pretty much every other wallet I know has some form of USB connection. Here it has absolutely zero USB connection. To recharge the battery, you detach it and plug it into the separate charger. So there's absolutely no way to connect this to a computer via USB or any of those other methods I just mentioned. Next, the Cobalt Vault itself works on a QR code interface, meaning that it works with the Cobalt Vault app. So basically, you're gonna have to scan QR codes via the camera on the back of the Cobalt Vault. You're gonna have to scan a QR code generated on your Cobalt app and vice versa. So that does provide more security when transferring data. In fact, the only way to actually exchange any information between the Kobo app and their Kobo Vault wallet is actually through scanning each's QR codes. There's no other way to transfer information. So while this does mean that you will need both devices present to make any transactions, it also means that you don't need a computer present because you don't need a computer at all. So when it comes to updating the firmware on your Kobo Vault to support things such as more cryptocurrencies and features, you never have to worry about plugging into a computer via USB because again guys, there are no USB ports on this device. So if you're wondering how it updates, well, underneath the back side of the wallet, there's a small slot with a screwdriver that if you unscrew that, you'll be able to slide in a TF card or an SD card, which you'll be able to upgrade the device. You can download the secure firmware updates right from Kobo's website, and again, you'll be able to download it to your card and insert the TF card into the device itself. It will update, authenticate, and you'll be good to go. The Kobo Vault also has a bank grade encryption chip which stores and signs transactions. And that same encryption chip instantly triggers a self-destruct mechanism that wipes all stored private keys and data in the event of an attempt to physically force open its body. So if anyone were to ever try to tamper with or break into your device physically, the self-destruct mechanism would be triggered and the entire device would be wiped. Now when it comes to software security, when you first open up your Kobo Vault, it'll have you go to their website to authenticate your device with their web authentication protocol. This helps prevent supply chain attacks and ensures your device arrives securely. The Kobo Vault also comes with multi-password protection, multi-signature support for Bitcoin, and it's entirely backed up by a 24 mnemonic word recovery seed. The device itself is built with custom encryption firmware that meets BIP32, 39, and 44 protocols, which is designed to get the most use of the bank grade encryption chip. The encryption firmware also keeps your private key in the encryption chip at all times, including signing transactions or completing other operations that require the private key. The Kobo Vault also gives you the option to add passphrase protected hidden vaults, which basically adds another layer of security in protecting your cryptocurrencies. Now while most hardware wallets do include the ability to add a passphrase to create hidden wallets, not all hardware wallets do, so I definitely think that was a nice add-on by Kobo. Because with the passphrase, even if someone gained access to your 24 word recovery seed, the passphrase would essentially work as a 25th word and provide a further layer of security in protecting your crypto. Lastly, the device does conduct automatic self-checks to prevent software tampering. On each boot up, Kobo Vault runs a security check on all critical components. So let's talk about a few specs of the wallet. So it does have a four inch color display, which is completely touchscreen. The entire screen is all touchscreen and all sensitive information, including passwords, pins, and recovery seeds, are all entered on the touchscreen itself with a small digital keyboard instead of being entered on a computer where there could be malware or keyloggers. Next up, the detachable battery does have a 1540 milliamp hour battery built inside, and it's rated to last up to 200 hours in standby mode. Now to fully recharge the battery takes roughly about two hours. That's what I found when I recharged my battery. You'll also notice on the back of the Kobo Vault, there is a camera right there, and that camera does serve two purposes. Firstly, it lets you scan QR codes if you ever need to enter a wallet address 
This is great because it doesn't require you to manually type it in, removing the chance of error putting in a wrong address. Secondly, it also functions as a security mechanism because it scans QR codes on your Cobalt Vault app on your phone to easily sign and verify transactions. Now, if you're wondering what cryptocurrencies the Cobalt Vault is gonna support, when it first launches to the public, it's gonna support eight cryptocurrencies initially. And those cryptocurrencies are gonna be Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Tron, and EOS. In addition, it's also gonna to support tokens, Ethereum, Tron, and EOS-based tokens. Now, Cobalt Vault does say that they do plan to support more cryptocurrencies going forward as well, but that will be the initial batch of coins supported at launch. Now, in terms of the Cobalt Vault app, the app is available on both Android and iOS devices, and it's a very simple process to sync it to your Cobalt Vault wallet. To do that, all you have to do is generate a QR code on your Cobalt Vault wallet. You'll then pull up the QR code scanner on the Cobalt app, and you basically just scan the QR code with your phone and the two devices will be synced together from there on out. So what are my overall thoughts on the Cobalt Vault wallet? Well, after testing it out for a bit, I've come up with a list of pros and cons. First of all, in terms of the pros, by far it's the most durable wallet that I've ever had the chance to test out or experience, you know, with its military grade construction, including the hard shell and the detachable battery to protect against corrosion. Uh, it's by far the most durable wallet I've ever seen. If you're one that ever worries about battery corrosion or physical damage damaging your hardware wallet, then this is definitely a wallet to consider. Now I do understand that some people may not like that you need both your phone and your wallet present to make a transaction, but to me I see this as another pro. Because for me, if even one of these devices falls into the wrong hands or you lose it or it gets stolen, you don't have to worry about your cryptocurrency assets being stolen or sent out to somewhere else because again, you need both devices present. The third pro for me is that the Cobo Vault does support passphrase protected hidden vaults. And basically what that means, guys, is that just adds on another layer of security on top of your recovery seed, meaning you can create multiple protected hidden vaults inside your wallet that even if someone gained access to your 24 word recovery seed, basically a passphrase adds on a 25th word that they wouldn't have access to your wallet if you have a passphrase on it, even if they have your full 24 word recovery seed. So that's just another layer of security I really love. And the final pro I have with the Cobalt Vault is that they do include the all metal mnemonic tablet, like I said, this is great because most hardware wallets only come with a piece of paper or two that you just have to write it down on. But if there's a fire or a flood or any water damage, basically your recovery seat is gone. Here, they include an all metal mnemonic tablet, especially with all the characters also made of metal. You just slide those right into your, into your mnemonic tablet. And it's a great way to store your recovery seat for the long term. Now there are two cons to me with the Cobo Vault wallet. The first being, when you detach the battery and you pack it away with the actual wallet itself inside the protective hard shell, it is a fairly large setup. It is a fairly large everyday carry. So it's pretty hefty, pretty bulky. This is not something that's gonna be easy to slide into your pocket or even put on a keychain. A lot of other hardware wallets are so small, they're almost USB flash drive size, that you can easily connect them on a keychain to carry on your keys or carry in your pocket or in your backpack. Now this is a lot bigger, a lot bulkier. So if you're someone that needs to carry your hardware wallet with you every day, then this may not be the option for you. But if you're looking to store this for long-term storage and you want to protect your hardware wallet against battery corrosion and you know physical damage, then this might be an option for you, especially if you don't need to carry your hardware wallet every day. Now the second con I have with the Cobalt Vault is that I noticed at times the touchscreen can be a little unresponsive. It's not really bad, but sometimes it may take me two or three presses to go on to a new menu inside the Cobalt Vault. Now it may be that it's just in my case because I do have an early review unit, but it is something that I did want to mention. So my question for you guys is what do you think of the Cobalt Vault? Could you see yourself taking advantage of all the durability features or do you think it's just overkill? Let me know what you guys think. And again, if you would like to learn more about the Cobalt Vault wallet, I'll link down below where you can pre-order online as well as my full list of its pros and cons. And lastly guys, if you have any questions about the Cobalt Vault, feel free to leave your questions down below in the comments. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Anyways guys, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.